Hey guys, this is Todd Harden with Plastic Oceans International. I'm the Global Head of, of Operations. I'm sitting here with Mark Minibu, who is the Head of Plastic Oceans Chile. Um, we, like many of you out there, are basically, uh, I guess we'll say at least in semi-self-quarantine uh, during this pandemic situation and uh, kind of trying things to do and to keep busy and, uh, you know, at the same time while being safe uh, and, and keeping ourselves away from others. So we know a lot of you are probably doing the same and therefore looking for some things online to keep yourself busy. Um, certainly go check out our film page at plasticoceans.org. You can find in the navigation um, a link to several films there. Most of them are short films that you can go and watch for free. You can also go to our YouTube channel as well. Um, but we thought we'd maybe have some casual conversations off the cuff, unrehearsed, unplanned, uh, with members of our team and other people around the world. So we thought we'd start with Mark. Mark is one of our most active uh, leaders within our organization. And as I said, he uh, is the head of Plastic Oceans Chile down there. So, so Mark, welcome and uh, give us an idea. I think people are curious how things everywhere around the world is, is, is unfolding with uh, the coronavirus pandemic. So what are you seeing down there in Santiago, Chile? Um, we're seeing a bit the same as, as, as what is happening in the United States and also in Europe. Uh, we're a bit behind the curve still. Um, so everybody's saying more and more like, you know what, everybody needs to be quarantined, uh, self-quarantined. So in the case of Plastic Oceans Chile, we have been self-quarantined since Monday, last Monday. So I've been already working from home for like the last five days um, and limiting leaving my house to the bare minimum just to buy some groceries and, and of course covering my mouth and washing my hands sure. every, every opportunity, trying to not to touch money. So, you know, pay with, 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 with the bank card. Um, but yeah, right now, yesterday we were in like 430 cases, uh, mm -hmm. no, no deaths yet. But if you compare our graph, uh, the way everything is developing with Italy, China, we're following exactly the same pattern. And, uh, so, so everybody's also saying like, okay, you know what? We have to shut down the country lockdown. We need to contain this. Uh, but there's a lot of, I mean, especially in Chile, it's a bit of a difficult situation because we have been in a very social problem and a national problem since October last year. When we yeah, had a lot of challenges there for you guys. Jeez. I mean, One after another, been, right? <laughs> I mean, we've been in a lockdown certain kind of situation since 18th of October last year. You know, the, had, we were, the whole country took a hit from that. And now we were hoping as Plastic Ocean Chile with all the projects we had uh, lining up for November, December, end of year, you know, uh, a lot of workshops, a lot of things uh, planned. We moved everything up our calendar till March after our summer holidays in the, in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and all those plans got frozen again and now we're locked up in the house. Um, so yeah, of course, like anybody else, we're worried. We're worried for, for our health, for our families, for our safety, but also like, okay, what's next? What are we going to do? Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, been some tough challenges there for you guys, to say the least. Yeah. And obviously now with this, this new thing, it's uh, um, unfortunate for a lot of people around the world. Um, you know, just, and we'll come back to that in just a second, but just a real quick brief overview, maybe of Plastic Oceans Chile. And really, um, let's just pretend these bad things aren't happening out in the world. But um, I think a lot of people don't, you know, realize we have Plastic Oceans International, but then from that, we have various branches around the world. And you guys have certainly been one of the most proactive ones out there and have some great programs. Maybe just a quick, you know, give us that 60 second um, overview of Plastic Oceans Chile and what you guys are involved with right now. Yeah, well, and, and we always we always say that we have five main pillars uh, working here in Chile. The, the main one is education. Uh, we visit a lot of schools, uh, universities to do workshops, do film screenings, etc. Uh, the second one is science. Uh, right now, we're working on a, a paper about uh, microplastic contamination in southern Patagonia, which is also part of Chile. Uh, audiovisual, uh, like all our offices, that that's one of the main. Uh, 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 tools that we use and, and what we do with our that's the reason we're here. <laughs> reason we're here exactly. So we do exactly the same. Uh, of course, we, we we did a great project last year in Rapa Nui with Sarah and and her World Guinness Record swim that got documented. So um, uh, the, the the project in Patagonia it's also being documented and worked on. Um, the fourth one is legislation. Right now, we, we have a bill, or there is a bill in Chilean Congress to regulate single-use plastics, what we're very proud of, with a lot of political support. And the last one is the circular economy. 
um, which for us has proven to be a very interesting tool to build a bridge between conservation and the rest of society, companies, etc. So, so those are the five main pillars we work on here in, in Chile. Good, good. Well, it's, it's fantastic stuff you guys uh, do on a regular basis. And uh, yeah, the Patagonia stuff's exciting. I think a lot of people don't realize it is part of Chile. It's always associated, I think, to, to Argentina more. But um, um, good. Well, listen, let me real quick, I, know, I wanted to get your thoughts on a couple things going back to uh, the coronavirus um, and just kind of see what your initial thoughts are. I'll do a little bit of a, sheet, a screen share here, if I may. Uh-huh. Um, so if we bring this up here, share, so everyone can kind of see here. First thing is just, this is just an interesting thing. This is from our friends at the Plastic Pollution Coalition, um, where they're saying that they kind of look at the life, the life of the virus on various material. And they're saying that at least it lasts, at least it lives at least two times as long on plastic compared to cardboard. So I, I think that's kind of an interesting um, thing here. Um, and there's kind of this, this weird moment for us right now because in many ways the, the general public perception right now is, is more along the lines of something like this from the Wall Street Journal, War on Plastic takes a backseat to coronavirus because a lot of people are saying, hey, right now I kind of want single-use plastic. As, as someone that's so passionate about eliminating single-use plastic, you know, what, I mean, what's, what's your thought on that? I mean, what do you think the long-term ramifications are? And do you think it's, it's valid that right now maybe we need some single-use plastic? Valid or not? I mean, what do, you, what do you think? And I know you haven't had time to prepare for this. It's a bit of an unfair question, but I'm always curious just to kind of get initial reactions from people. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, to be quite honest, uh, everything we do over here in Chile, we always point to the fact that plastic has been very useful in our lives uh, since since the beginning uh, uh, of its invention, and especially of course when 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 it got more mass marketed in the 60s, uh, yeah, it improved our lives in many ways. Uh, there's a lot of discussions going on, still going on about you know plastic bags ban, replacing them for disposable paper bags. Like footprint of plastic maybe uh, in the creation is less, but when uh, uh, when you dispose of it in the wrong way, it's a lot bigger than other pro other products. So so it's a bit of a a, a difficult discussion and, and I mean all this plastic research and how it impacts our life especially when it's disposed right. in the wrong way it's still going on we still don't know exactly how it affects our bodies uh, once it enters the food chain there's still so much that needs to be investigated and now I mean you're just showing me this for the first time that, that plastic yeah. and food virus maybe are like an even worse combination ever uh, it's like man with the science we need the science but things are happening so fast it's very hard to say, like, is it good? Is it bad? Do we need it? Don't we need it? For instance, where I live in this part of, of, of Santiago, um, for, on one hand, you have national bills and laws and regulations about plastics, but you can also have local, um, I don't know how you call it. It's not a local law. It's like an ordinance. I don't know how you would say that. Yeah, sure. That also bans, since the 3rd of March, single-use items that are especially uh, used for delivery and fast food and sushi restaurants and all those kind of plastics that you know they're always contaminated with food, they cannot be recycled, uh, the volume is too low, etc. But now that everybody's locked up in their houses, the only way for the restaurants and bars that have been closed to at least save their business is to yeah. do kinds of delivery. So, yeah. so I was talking to the municipality and they said like, I mean, we can't, we can't enforce right now that we have this ban in our municipality when it means that all these restaurants have to lose their business, probably go bankrupt. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do with all this trash that's now going to be generated with all the deliveries right. to everybody at home who don't want to be hungry? Um, what's my take on it? I mean, probably we're looking at this situation for maybe another two or three months. Um, in this case, I, I, I don't have an answer. I really don't like single-use plastics. We're working very hard to get them out of the country or not, not having them even exist. But right. right now, this is just, you know what? This is just too overwhelming. And plastic... Well, I, think, and I think it's being used a phrase that's being used a lot right now, right? It's uncharted territory. And, and for you know, for us, you know, on the global level, I think we're still evaluating, you know, all this. And... I, I can at least certainly understand the public perception, right or wrong, of 
You know, well, I want my plastic wrap right now, right? And that's a tough, that's a tough hurdle for us to get past. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how these, as you said, the next two or three months, perhaps, uh, where this is um, dealt with and hopefully resolved and we can all get past it. But it's, it is going to be interesting. You know, one other thing, and I'll share my screen here one more time, um, that we see is the, the face masks themselves not being disposed of properly. And, you know, during this time, I think, you know, a lot of this for a lot of folks is, is kind of considered low level priority, but I think there's potentially, and I, I don't say this with any knowledge scientifically, but I kind of feel like just discarding your, your face mask haphazardly um, on the beach or in the streets or whatever, isn't just about plastic pollution, perhaps about uh, public health safety as well. I mean, what have you, have you kind of seen these images where I'm showing right now um, coming out of Hong Kong, I believe it is where the, where the gentleman is uh, holding up all these face masks that have just been discarded on the beaches there. Ah, oh, this is really worrying. I've seen uh, photos like this also in Chile. Uh, yeah. and, um, I mean, one thing is that, that we're working very hard to get rid of single-use plastics, but now we're talking about single-use plastics possibly contaminated with a virus. Like, yeah. I mean, this is one of the issues that we have been dealing with since the beginning. Like, people asking us, like, okay, there's so much single-use plastics in hospitals and clinics. Uh, so what solutions do you have for that? Well, as far as I know, we still don't have any because it's all about, you know, uh, minimizing health rec, uh, uh, risks, making sure people uh, are, are, are using uh, uh, um, uh, disinfected, uh, sterile uh, uh, products, yeah. lightweight. So what do hospitals do? They generate a huge amount of plastic trash every day. And as far as I know, there are special uh, protocols to, to deal with that kind of waste. Uh, I think it's even regulated by law. Like it's it's marked as like hazardous waste, something like that. It's getting it's being burned, and now all of a sudden the the general population is is having all these things in their hands, and of course they're not burning them. There's no there's no protocol. Again, we're in uncharted territory. It's the general population using medical uh, uh, products and not disposing yeah. them yeah. in the right way. So yes, this is very it's very concerning. Yeah, no, for sure it is. You know, I think, I guess the, the, the word of advice for folks is, you know, listen, we, right now, good or bad, I think med medical usage of, of plastic materials in the, in the medical world are important right now. Not necessarily single-use plastic, right? But I mean, obviously, plastic in general does a lot of positive things for us. Uh, we don't want it long-term, we all know that. Um, but like you said, this is a tough situation and a tough one, I think, for anyone in our movement to kind of wrap our heads around right now. Yeah. And um, really need, need an evaluation period and figure out, you know, really what does it mean. But yeah, I would say to everybody, listen, if you're using face masks, dispose of them properly. Um, forget the plastic pollution message. It's more for me right now about, you know, let's keep people safe. Let's not just discard masks in the, in the street, um, so to speak, or on the beach or wherever. So yeah, Or even in um, your own trash. I mean, I don't know if, if a face mask that ends up in the trash and then ends up in a landfill doesn't pose any health risks anymore. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of uncertainty, and that's, and of course, that's why we're seeing this. You know, I don't want to. Maybe mass hysteria is is a bad term because there's a, there's obviously massive validity to this being a major issue, and those that kind of joked it away initially, especially here in the United States where I am, um, was disheartening. And now we're seeing, okay, people are changing their tune. So we need to take it seriously, but we also need to take it responsibly. Um, you know, and for, for us as Plastic Oceans, one thing we should tell everybody is, you know, we certainly are not only as individuals a little bit on shutdown, but even as an organization, you know, we've stopped production on a film we're working on right now, yeah. right? We, we, we just can't send our team out safely and, and be producing films, traveling and so forth. Um, you know, as, 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 as well as other activities, whether that's beach cleanups, um, film screenings, workshops. Um, you know, I think globally, we've all kind of, you know, put things on hold. We're kind of going to the online world like we are right now. So I really would encourage everybody um, to kind of do the same, right? Let's try to make this a remote experience, um, a positive thing, um, and make the most of it. So, I mean, um, that, that, I think that's the invitation to everyone. Like, okay, everybody's, yeah. well, hopefully everybody's locked up in their homes by now. Uh, <laughs> I know in Chile people are not. 
It should be, but okay. Um, and, and now you're at home, you see what you're doing, you have time to reflect, you have time to evaluate, you have time to talk, you have time to be with your family. You see all the trash you're generating and you can't just put it on the street because maybe even your right, waste right. management is being interrupted. It's time to rethink, you know, how we're going to come out of this. We're going to go back to normal. Yeah, no, good, good observations, Mark, for sure. And, you know, the other thing I would say, too, is, you know, us being kind of oceans type people, seeing folks on the beach, stop it, right? Get off the beach. <laughs> we're, we were seeing that in Florida. Thank God they're, you know, they're now enforcing that. Same thing in Bondi Beach in, in Sydney. They're finally enforcing that and making people get off the beach and they're closing them down. So, but like you said, it's a time to maybe to really, as we say quite a bit, right, rethink plastic and really see um, how much we are generating. Um, yeah. And just, you know, give a, give a thought to your, other, to, your other, to your other humans, right, your other living creatures on this planet and what this all means and how we interact with each other. Yeah. So, if we're able to adapt to such a, 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 a health situation that we are willing to lock ourselves up to yeah. deal with whatever we have to deal with, buy toilet paper, buy whatever, and you see these irrational thoughts that, that come to us like, okay, what do I do now? I have to adapt. Yeah. I have to adapt now. Okay. So if you're adapting and probably have to live like this for a while, why don't you make any real good changes and stick to them? Once we're out of this whole situation, yeah. why go back to before and make a real change and that lasts a lot longer? Like this is the opportunity. We're adapting anyway. We have to be uncomfortable anyway. Let's, you know, stick yeah. to the, the, the right changes now. Well, I tell you what, I've, I've, uh, Netflix, of course, has become a good friend and, and also rediscovering, uh, you know, it's been so long since I've just read, read a good book and <laughs> I'm going to be uh, jumping into one in, one in particular here um, starting hopefully tonight. So I'm excited about that. Um, I would like to just point out real quick, again, I'll share my screen for everybody um, real quick. Just so you can find out, if you want to learn more about Plastic Oceans Chile, uh, right now you can see our website, PlasticOceans.org. If you just go to the About tab at the top, you can go and from there link to Plastic Oceans Canada, Chile, Europe, and Mexico. Um, yes, we are Plastic Oceans. Um, we do have Plastic Oceans Europe now. It's our newest branch. Um, but yeah, you see here, Chile, some basic information there. Um, that you can learn about uh, the basic efforts going on down there with, with Mark and his team in Santiago. So well, I, uh, I definitely good. love your, your background setting better than mine, sir. Um, looks like a nice palm tree here in Detroit. It's about uh, negative 10 Celsius today. Um, but, um, but hey, to, I, I guess we're all in this together no matter what the weather is. We're all kind of in quarantine now and trying to make the best of this. So, um, you know, with that, Mark, any, any closing comments while we wrap this up as far as what might be coming up for you? Words of advice or anything uh, of interest with Plastic Oceans Chile? I mean, stay at home, first of all. Stay at home, be safe, and, and try to have conversations with people. Talk about what you observe. Talk about, talk about what you want to change. You know, a lot of people say, no, I don't have time to make changes. I don't have time to be more sustainable. Or being sustainable is more expensive. No, it's not. Lock yourself up in your house for a week and you'll find out, find out you're very capable of making changes and it's all about if you want to make them. I think that's the main thing that I want to ask everybody, like have conversations, make changes. And you know, uh, as, as you say, Todd, read books, read reports, uh, as, at least we as Plastic Oceans Chile, we're using now the time online to publish some reports that we people want to read. Uh, we have been promoting Echo, the Echo film for children, so families can talk with the children about what's in the film. Um, conversation, talk, talk, talk. Use the time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, and folks, like look, look to our website for as a resource. Our resources page has... Mm -hmm you know, scientific studies and have social media information, a link to our YouTube channel where you'll find, you know, tons of content there that you can check out for free. Um, so yeah, jump in and uh, use this as an opportunity to, to, to become more aware of what's going on and, 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 and self-reflection, I guess. So of course, I mean, what I've been doing, I mean, I've been writing it already and put it like in a temporary, I, as a draft, I'm writing a blog about the circular economy. And as I am locked up at home right now, I think I will be finishing it the couple, next couple of days. So fantastic! <laughs> cool. As well. Well, listen, everyone. Um, this is the first of some conversations, some casual conversations that we'll be publishing and posting on social media, not just with our own team members, 
um, but things we'll look at are our global ambassadors, experts from around the world. Um, if you go to Plastic Oceans Canada, um, on their Facebook page, you'll see a great interview um, with Adrian Midwood, who's the uh, head of Plastic Oceans Canada. Um, interviewed Andy Swart. Andy um, is the guy who's run across Canada a few different times uh, with the Million Bottle Pledge, picking up litter across Canada. Um, unfortunately, that for 2020 seems to be on hold right now, of course, until we know what's going on. But check it out. A nice little casual conversation there as well. So, Mark, uh, from Detroit, I thank you and uh, look forward to chatting again soon. Okay. Talk to you later, man. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.